He's there through it all. Through the valley, on the mountain, he, he don't leave you alone. He's faithful. I love it. He's faithful this morning. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Turn to Hebrews chapter 2. I hope y'all don't get part of the Bible. All right, so we're going to try to try to mind the Lord this morning. In all of these greatness, I, I like that song. He's been there. They need to add another verse. That he is here. He's been there, but he's here. Right? It's good to know and look back and say, well, he was there. But it's better to know that he's here. He'll be there. He was there. He'll be there, but he's here. Think about that. You know, I don't have to die for things to get better. You know that? I don't have to die for it to get better. Uh, this life ain't a bad life. It's all on how you live it. It's all on how you live it. Now you can, uh, you can eat the apples off the tree or complain about the rotten ones on the ground. <laughs> Think about it. It's all on how you live it. Is, 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 are we trouble free? No. no. If I hadn't been so dumb, I wouldn't have so many troubles. <laughs> what if I could get an honest witness of how many have shot themselves in the foot? Yeah. See, so don't blame the Lord or don't blame life or look in the mirror and say, you are as dumb as a rock. <laughs> I'm going better. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Before I forget, there's going to be a business meeting tonight. It's going to be real short. We're going to do it at the beginning of the service. All right? It's going to be real short. It, it'll last no more than three minutes. That's how short the business meeting is going to be. So you're going to have to listen fast. It'll be during the announcements. It'll be fast. And because we got baptized stuff to do, we're not having a business meeting and run and preach. All right? So if y'all can't pray out of the problems of a business meeting, do we have one? We ain't had one yet. And it's just going to be a three-minute, in fact, it may not be that long. Okay? So I like them like that. Okay? And we ain't going to change the light bulb, ladies. All right? Hallelujah. Okay? So be here tonight. Be here tonight, okay? You going to help me? Hebrews chapter 2. The brother David gets a workout. Now, y'all don't read your Bibles much, I'm sure, for the most part. And David gets more Bible in two services than most people get in a month. You know, with what old brother Rick lays out on Sunday morning, and then what I've been giving him on Sundays and Sunday nights, he gets more out than anybody. And he's got... He can't go to sleep. Y'all can't. He can't. So he's on the spot uh, when, uh, since we've been putting this on the wall. All right? Now, we're not trying to discourage you from reading your Bible. We're trying to help you. All right? It's hard to talk to somebody when they're going to miss. The Bible says search the Scriptures for him. Then you think, yeah, don't say search for the Scriptures. <laughs> okay? So we're going to try to help you. That's why we're putting it on the wall. We're trying to help you. Okay? So let's enjoy the Lord. I'm going to pray and try to preach. Okay? Y'all pray for me as I'm praying. Father, I come. And there is nobody like you, boy. You are there. You're, you're back there. You're up there. And you're in here. And I appreciate you this morning. I appreciate how great and marvelous you are. How you answer prayer. How you turn things around when that we feel like in no possible way. How you take things that doctors say is impossible and you just fix it. Yes. And how you take care of things when our valley is so low and dark yes. that we don't figure there's any hope. And right when we get to the bottom, we find that you got light down there in the bottom of the hollow. You're great. I love you this morning. Now, Lord, I have no ability. 
I have nothing at all this morning. I have no mind. I have nothing. God, I need you. If you would, you clear everything away. Anything that might resemble sin or be even a hint of it, God, out of my mind, my heart, remove it. I want to be clean with you this morning. And God, how I need your touch. I need fresh oil this morning. Touch me fresh of the Holy Spirit that I might preach as you would have for me to preach. And Lord, give me the memory that's necessary. And, and let me only say the things that you want said. And Lord, that the flesh that would come out, God, would make you set it aside. And anything that's not of you, Lord, I pray that people will forget it. And anything and everything that is of you, I pray that we'll never forget it. May you put it in the backside of our soul and may we have it now. And Lord, help us now to pay attention. Help us to give you the glory. And I'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. Please give me power, I pray. In Jesus' name, and amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 2, like if I could, to give you the last message on this series. If you come back tonight, I'm going to give you the last message of the series on surrendering to the Savior. And I'm going to give you the last message on this series of how great the salvation is. So great salvation. I want you to listen carefully today. All right? I find nothing any better than the salvation that God gives. There's no better Savior. There's no better Savior. In fact, there's no other Savior. There's no better salvation. There's no better Savior. There's no better way than the Jesus way. Now, I don't know how you're living. It's none of my business how you're living. In one sense, I can't dictate to you how to live. I can't force you to live any certain way. But I can tell you this. There'll be no way out in the world better than what you'll find living for the Lord Jesus. There'll be nothing out there that even comes close. Now, you may think it is. And it may last for a bit and be wonderful. But every apple that the world will give you has got a worm in it. And it'll sire on you and make you sick. And it'll kill you if you continue in that way. Understand that. But you can come with the Lord. And there'll be better, no better way to travel than with the Lord. There's no better Savior. There's no better salvation. There's no better life to live than the Christian life. If you'll just do it today. If you'll just do it. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 says... Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was said fast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Verse 3 tells us, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So great salvation. Again, it's not a prayer. It's not a plan. It's not a program. But it's a person. First John. First John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And this is the record. That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Salvation is not a church thing. Salvation is not a man-made thing, but salvation is God. It's Jesus. It's God in the flesh. It's the person of Jesus Christ. And when you meet Jesus, when He comes in, then you are never the same. It matters not where you're from, who you are, what your past is. Cheryl Ann sung it last week. It don't matter where you've been, what you've done. When Jesus comes in. When salvation comes in, boy, you'll just start living. It'll just be a brand new life. And old boy, we watched get saved yesterday. He put on Facebook or Messenger, he messaged Lindsay. He used to be Lindsay's neighbor. And he said, the devil don't have me now. I'm a child of the king. Hey, can I tell you who gave 
living witness of that. I never read one verse out of the Bible. I never gave him a net verse or an assurance verse. I said, you talk to God. You repent to God. You trust God. And if he tells you you're all right, then neighbor, you can believe him. He bawled and cried and said, God, I'm wicked. I'm a sinner. Oh, save me, God. Save me. And I smiled and said, well, he said he saved me. Oh, he's happy. And then he knew inside. You know what he experienced? He didn't experience the preacher's visit. He didn't experience something of religion. Hey, he experienced Jesus' salvation. And that's all it is this morning. You need so great salvation. Determine how you want. So great salvation. So great Savior. So great servant. Oh, so great life. So great eternity. Hey, it gets no better than Jesus this morning. It'll never change. And if you'll let it change you, you'll never be the same. Right, right. Never. It'll never be the same. Yeah. It's so great. It's so great that people miss it. Yeah. People miss it. It's so simple, people miss it. They're trying to work. They try to fight it. I mentioned Wednesday night, I was seeing, uh, seeing the clipping. I didn't get around. I can't even find it right now. I, 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 I want to try to find it so I can show you on the wall. But I had a whole crowd of people. And this gal, this young gal, had on a t-shirt holding up a poster. It said, I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. Well, she said, I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. Now, you say, that's awful. Ain't it awful? Holding up a sign saying, I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. If you're sitting here this morning lost without God, you ain't holding up your sign. Huh? But you're saying the same thing. I'm going to hell and proud of it. Uh, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of people that boasted on going to hell. Let me read you a few things this morning. A man who died in 1797 by the name of William Pope. Right? He was a leader of a bunch of infidels. And he ridiculed everything. It didn't matter what it was. Anything religious, he ridiculed. And one of his exercises, all right, was to take a Bible and to kick it around the floor till he completely tore it up. That was one of his daily exercises. That's wicked as hell. Yeah. Huh? Are you hearing me? What it was, he was lost. All right. And they were some people that was in his room when he died. And they spoke and they wrote this down because they never had heard anything like it. This is what went off in the room when he was a dying. Now this is before they dope people up. There have been a lot of things that's not been seen in rooms where people's died because doctors has made it to where everybody's calm. And that's okay. But we missed a lot. We missed a lot of people reaching up and grasping his hand. And we missed a lot of people trying to back up in the bed and get out of hell. We missed a lot of truth. But this man here says, this is what he said. Now here's a man laying dying. He said, I have no contrition. I cannot repent. God will damn me. I know the day of grace is past. Well, how would you feel saying that? Huh? You see one laying here who is damned forever. Oh, eternity, eternity. Nothing for me but hell. Come, evil torments. I hate everything God has made. I have no hatred for the devil. I wish to be with him. I long to be in hell. Do you not see? Do you not see him? He's coming for me. That's how this man died. That's bad. Yeah. Voltaire, a very famous infidel. <laughs> 
French infidel, noted talented writer of his time, done his best to write everything he could against the Bible, and write again everything he could against religion, write everything he could against God and Christ. And this is what he said when he died. He said, of Christ, curse the wretch. That's what he said when he was dying. That's what he said about Jesus. Huh? In 20 years, Christianity will be no more. He said, my single hand will destroy it. That's what he said. Huh? The nurse that sat by his bed as he died and said, he said what he said. For all the wealth in Europe. She said, I would never want to watch another infidel die. That's what the nurse said. He said, I am abandoned by God. I'll give you half of what I'm worth if you'll give me six months of life. Then I shall go to hell. Oh Christ, oh Jesus Christ. That's right. You know what he was trying to do? He was trying to go through life by himself. Never experienced that great salvation. And I thought of these people and I looked up some things that I knew for years about some that has been saved. And this is how they died. Matthew Henry, the great theologian, and he get his commentaries all the time, he says, sin is bitter, but I bless God I have inward support. And he died. Amen. Uh, I mean, think about it. I bless God I got inward support. Uh, I like that. Martin Luther started the Reformation, if you would. Our God is the God from whom cometh salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape. Now this is what the brothers saying when they die. All right? They wasn't doped up for nothing. They just that was their last speech. Huh? John Knox said, Live in Christ, live in Christ. The flesh don't need to fear this death. Uh, that sounds like victory to me. What do you think? Huh? John Calvin said, Oh, thou Lord bruises me. I'm satisfied. Huh? I, you satisfied? I'm satisfied in life. I think I'll be satisfied in death. Huh? John Wesley, founder of the Methodist Church, you know what he said? Best of all, God is with us. Farewell. Farewell. Huh? Let her not. Farewell, people. Farewell. Huh? You know what he experienced? He didn't experience a religious movement. People talk about religious movement. We're not taking X likes. <laughs> hey, it's Jesus. It's Jesus this morning. Huh? Charles Wesley said this. Laying there dying. Quoting scripture. I shall be satisfied with thy likeness. Satisfied. Satisfied. He kept repeating. Satisfied. Huh? Baxter, one of the theologians, said, I have pain. Ah, but I have peace. I have peace. Yeah. Uh, Tre Trexton said, Blessed be God, though I change my place, I shall not change my company. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like this one. Good one said this. Ah, oh, is this dying? How have I dreaded an enemy that's such a friend? Huh? He would tickle to death. If you would die today, are you tickled about it? Or are you scared? Does it haunt you and haunt your mind that when you die, things are going to be rough? Or do you get bound off as a boy going to school? Huh? Tickled to death. Huh? Everett. I like this one. This is my last night to give you. This is what Everett said. He, done, he said this for 25 minutes until he breathed his last breath. Glory, 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 
glory. For 25 straight minutes, that's the only word he laid there and said, glory, 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 glory. How'd you like to be in a death chamber with that glory, 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 glory? I believe we just shout him with him, don't you think? Glory, 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 glory. You know what it was? He had met salvation. He didn't go to a program or a plan or a prayer, but he met salvation. He met Jesus. And there's no greater salvation because he's God. He's the Savior this morning. I'm going to do my best to show you how big he is. Can I show you how great this salvation is? So we're going to finish up this morning on oh, it's so great. It's so great. Huh? It's so great in its ability. Huh? You know, I should say he's so great in his ability. Huh? How about we look here at 1 Timothy? 1 Timothy chapter 1. We okay? Is everybody okay? What we're talking about is salvation, neighbor. See, salvation ain't just walking forward. Although that's part of it. You can't do it, see? Salvation ain't kneeling down, although you'll bow down. Salvation ain't praying, though. It don't hurt you to pray. Huh? Right. Salvation is Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus. But the ability of this salvation is marvelous. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 will tell us this. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, this is Paul talking, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who was before a blaspheme? This is what Paul said. He said, let me tell you what I, I was before. This is what I was before. Right. Right. Hey, I mean, get a witness of every saved person in here. Hey, can I get a witness of you saved? Are you saved this morning? This is what you was. Yeah. Just like Paul. He said, I was a blasphemer. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. Ah, but look at this. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. That's what we were, just ignorant. We lived in unbelief. We were blasphemers, injurious. We were just wicked as hell because we were ignorant of it. We just done what come natural. Nobody taught us a lie. We done it natural. Nobody taught us to cuss. We done it natural. Nobody taught us to steal and to be a whoremonger or a harlot or a drunk. We just done it because that was what was natural. Oh, but we obtained mercy when we met Jesus and his salvation. We obtained mercy like the Apostle Paul. Huh? Then it says this in verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. The ability of this salvation, it's the only thing that saves sinners. The only, there's nothing else that will save a sinner but salvation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Think about it. That's ability, man. Yeah. Nothing else can save a sinner. Huh? Nothing else. And not only that, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. There's nothing else that not only can save a sinner, there ain't nothing else that can change a sinner. Yeah. Oh, there's people trying to change yourself everywhere. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to do better. Preacher, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to get closer. Oh, you're helping me, preacher. No, 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 no. Listen, you can't change yourself. You can't get good enough. You can't be nice enough. You can't give enough. You've got to have Jesus. You've got to have salvation. And the ability of salvation this morning is not only, he'll, he's the only one that can save a sinner, but he's the only one that can change a sinner. Huh? That's the ability. And then there's availability. <laughs> 
Not only the ability of this so great salvation, but the availability of this so great salvation. See, it's available to anyone. Anyone. You know what that means? Anyone. Well, what about anyone? Well, what about sons of anyone? Well, what about the Muslims and them? Anyone. What about the China? Anyone. What about the Japanese? Anyone. What about the Vietnamese? Anyone. What about the Mexicans? Anyone. What about the Democrats? Anyone. What about the Republicans? Anyone. Huh? What about the Independents? Anyone. What about the Baptists? He'll save a Baptist if they let it. Huh? There's a lot of Baptists that need saved. Because that's all they are is Baptists. Huh? He didn't even save a Nazareth. Huh? Wouldn't he, Gwen? He didn't even save a Nazareth. Maybe Gwen will get it. Huh? He'll even save, he'll save a church of God. Simply a God of people. He'll even save a Catholic. Huh? He will. He'll save a Jew. Well, you, well, they're always saying, no, they're neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, bond nor free. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He'll save a drunkard. Yeah. He'll yeah. save a dope head. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He'll yeah. save a pill head. Yeah. He'll save an illegal pill head and a prescription pill head. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He will. Yeah. He'll save a store-bought drunk or a homemade drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? He'll save one that slips around every now and again or one that slips around once or one that slips around all the time. Yeah, right. Huh? All right, go ahead. He'll run. He'll save one that cusses in big words and some that just say in little ones. Then leave it. Huh? Go ahead. He's the only one. Right. He's the only one that's saved. He's the only one. Huh? But he'll save that guy. The availability. Let's look at it. John 6 37. We're going to do them fast. You ready? John 6 37. Where's it at? All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will know by his house. Next. Give it to me fast. That whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Give it to me now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Give me another. To him give all the promised witness that is through his name. Whosoever believeth in him shall not or shall receive remission of sins. Give me the next one. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, did you notice the word whosoever in any of that? How do you know who that is? That'd be whosoever. You know what it means? Whosoever. You know where it means? Whoever they are, wherever they're at, whenever they'll come, it don't matter. The availability is great. Amen. Huh? All right. I believe there's another. And the Spirit and the bride say come. And let him that hear say come. And let him that is a thirst come in, whosoever will, let him take it the water like free. We all right on the availability? Right? It's available to everybody. But see, here's the catch. You've got you to gotta be a sinner to get saved. He only saves sinners. Huh? Romans 3.23. Huh? For all the sin that comes short of the glory of God, if you ain't a sinner, you can get saved. I've had people, maybe the baby's a woman down down right here. One 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 Sunday, told Brother Rich, you know, said, Come forward on invitation. Rick said, You said, Nope, not me. Went back to her seat, same way she could. Now you think of that. Somebody would get out of their seat, come on invitation to be saved, and say, I'm not a sinner. Well, I'm sorry, he can't save you if you're not a sinner. You say, well, that don't make sense. You gotta believe your sin. You gotta meet your sin. Huh? You gotta meet your sin. <coughs> Think about that. <coughs> then you gotta be willing to repent. Yeah. Acts 17. Huh? 1730 says this. I mean, that, and at the time of this ignorance, God wake up and now commandeth all men 
How many men? All. All men. You know what all means? All. All men everywhere. Where at? Everywhere. That mean here? Yeah. That means here too. Everywhere. I mean, all men everywhere to repeat. Huh? That's not what it says. And you got to be willing to receive Jesus. You can't be saved. You'll come to Jesus. John chapter 1, verse. But as many as what? Receive. Well, wait a minute. I thought it was talking about salvation. We are. Yes. See, it's him. Right. You willing to take Jesus? <coughs> you know, there's people that will say, well, I believe in God. So? <coughs> if you receive Jesus. Right. If you receive Jesus. <coughs> See, we talk about God. Everybody wants to talk about God. Well, let's talk about Jesus. Yeah, right. hey. Talk about him. Him. Huh? We okay? So we see it's got great ability. We see it's got great availability. Huh? But then it's got something else great. It's got great durability. It's, it's, a, it's got great ability. It's got great avail availability. And it's got great durability. It's durable. Huh? It's durable. In other words, it'll last. Is that okay? Philippians chapter 1. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right. got it under control. It's durable. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You go to Lowe's, you go to the paint department, and you got all these shelves of paint. And you read on it, and it'll say, uh, the most durable. All right. Then you go over to the to the, uh, the the stuff that you put on the abrasive stuff that you breathe. You don't slide, and you read that. There's cans of it that says, and they all they all compete, don't they, Garth? So one can will say the most durable, and then the other brand says, no, it's the most durable. And then when you put it down, none of it's durable. You know, you fall over all of them. Huh? Isn't that right? You know, they, they give you, they buy these clothes. They'll outlast anything. And as soon as you put it on, you rip the whole back out. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, these shoes. Uh, buy you a pair of mason shoes. They'll last more. Give me a pair of mason shoes. I can tear up an anvil with a banana peel. Amen. <laughs> uh, hey, they'll leak before I get home. Go ahead, give it to me. Uh, they're not durable. No, no, no. I can tear them up. Huh? If it can be broke, I can break it. If I can't, Brother Rick can't. <laughs> Brother Rick loves to buy new stuff just so he can get it home and break it so Gene Thomas can weld it up. <laughs> because he's afraid Gene is going to be bored retired. <laughs> Everything he buys new. Is that true or not, Gene? Everything he buys new. What's he do? He drives it straight to your house and can you reinforce this? <laughs> Can you build me a bumper? This is going to be too flimsy. Can you put a brace here? Because I'm going to break it. Nobody else breaks it. Supposed to be durable. Huh? But can I tell you that salvation is durable? It'll last. wonder how long it'll last. How about John 6? Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me has what? What's that half mean? I mean, you got it now. Are you saved? Huh? If you, are you saved? If you're saved, Amen. you got everlasting life now. Right. And if you don't think you're going to be saved tomorrow, you probably ain't got it today. Right. Because he only gives one kind. Right. He gives eternal, everlasting life. We okay with that? How about John 10, verse 20? And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall what? Never. You know what that means in the Greek? Never. You know what it means in the Hebrew? Never. You know what it means in English? Precise? Never. You know what it means in slang? Never. That's what it means. It's durable. We okay with that? How about we look at Hebrews 7? He saves you how far? The other boat. Unto the uttermost. Can I say that means all the way? Yes, 
He don't save you part way. He saves you all the way. Man. Be okay with that? How about Romans 5? He saved me. How he, God is a wrathful God. But you know what he does? By his blood I'm justified. And, and I, that I will not see the wrath of God. You know what it says? I shall be saved from wrath through salvation. How about Hebrews 13, 5? Huh? Let your conversation be without kindness and be content with such saying you have. For he is saying, I will leave you when you do wrong. Well, I'll leave you when you quit church. Well, I'll leave you when you when you when no, you can't put nothing else to it. What do you say? What to say? I will never leave at durable. Is that all right? It's a, it's a availability. It's a ability is great. It's availability is great. It's durability is great. And can I tell you this? It's desirability. Huh? It offers one other search for. It offers what others are searching for. Yeah. You're searching for something. Yeah. And you're trying things. People <coughs> try things. To satisfy. Yeah. That's why they try all these things to make them out of their mind. High. Yeah. It's not that they're wanting to run their life. They don't smoke crack to run their life. Right. They don't shoot up heroin to run their life. That ain't why they do it. Right. Huh? They don't drink to run their life. They want a better feeling or something better than what they have. Yeah. Yeah. So they're searching. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll get multiple partners to be intimate with. They're searching for happiness. Something. They're searching for a thrill, a rush, something. Can I tell you that this great salvation is desirable? Yeah, the yeah. desirability is as great as its ability, as great as its availability, as yeah. great as its durability. Huh? Yeah. The Hindus, they look for utopia. Something that will satisfy their life. Utopia. Yeah. Huh? The Muslims, they look for nirvana. Nirvana, nirvana. Looking for that place, you know that that realm. Are you hearing? The Mormons they look they look for a world to populate. Huh? They actually look for another planet. They're nice, respectable, white shirts, tie, name tag, briefcase, and they're wanting to find a planet Koa. To go popular. Are you here? Mm -hmm. They won't tell you all that in that first little 10 step card they give you. Know? I sat on the porch swing, I seen them coming one, one time, I, I seen them coming down the road, and I said, I ain't busy. I run got my Bible. Got out on the porch swing, and here they come. They come down there, and they said, We would like to. I said, I would love to discuss it. And they said, well, we have this book. I said, well, let's go over it. I would love to go over it. And they said, great, great. They got all interested. We sit there, and I offered them something to drink. And uh, we sit there. And they said, now, we have it. I said, no, leave another book in the cage. Let's just use the Bible. We had a wonderful hour and 45-minute conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, well, we thank you for taking your time, but now we're confused. <laughs> they were searching we got to the point where they said they was born again I said tell me about it they said well we went forward in our church service and they baptized us and told us that we were born again I said well let me tell you when I got born <laughs> they were searching here. They was desiring something. People desire the gospel. But listen to me. The Jehovah's Witnesses. 
the great people, great workers, faithful workers, good friends. Huh? Are you hearing me? They're looking for heaven on earth. Are you hearing me? Give me Hebrews 11, 10 real quick. And Abraham said he looked for a city. It's had foundation whose builder and maker was God. Amen. He was looking for something entirely different. I'm not looking for something to please me in this flesh. I want out of it. Are you hearing that? This flesh is my enemy. I'm looking for something out of this world. The desirability of this salvation is what you need to support it. I wonder, would you like to take it today? Would you like him today? Show him good opinion. Would you rather die like Voltaire, saying that Christ is a wretch? Huh? Would you rather be like the group of people that says, I'm going to hell and proud of it? Or would you like to be like that old boy? Glory, 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 glory for 25 minutes and die. Oh, glory, glory. I then told Cheryl Ann, but I'm supposed to have, I never went back and looked, I'm supposed to have a, a DNR clause on my living wing. That means do not resuscitate. Do not stop me once I get started. That's what that means. No shots. Nothing to knock me out. I don't want to miss a thing. My pastor. Chick Carr. He was laying there, eating up with cancer. Me and Daddy was there about four and a half hours before he died. We stood there by the bed and I said, How you doing, old buddy? Laying here waiting. Laying here waiting. I said, You ain't pain? No, I ain't been in no pain through all this. He said, They put that pump on me. He said, I don't never push it. He said, I ain't on no painkiller. He said, His grace is sufficient, Mark. His grace is sufficient. We left. Me and Daddy left. Carmen Ann came in to his room at four in the morning. He said, We're making all that noise. She said, Why? She said, I'm expecting a call. <laughs> Daddy, it's where? Well, ain't nobody going to call. Oh, yes, they are. Said the Lord's fixing the call, and I don't want to miss his call. Amen. And grinned in this little bit. Wow. He went to bed. Amen. That's the difference. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Let's lay everything aside. Lay everything aside. Or you say, <clears throat> everything aside. Let's forget everything. Or you say, do you know that you know that you know that you know that you say if you don't know won't you slip out of your seat this morning and come and get saved that you know that you know Kim I look at you and you sit there smiling when I started saying that you smiled that you know, that you know, that you know. Well, to baptize you here in just a minute. You know, that you know, that you know. Mikey. See, you just sit there and just smile. Time that you know, that you know, that you know. Huh? Huh? Do you know that you know, that you know, that you know? Salvation so great. Oh, man, he's so great. He really is great. Teddy, he's great. There ain't nobody no greater. Tom Kessler ain't nobody any better. Are you hearing me? Ain't nobody any sweeter, Miss Don. Hey, Miss Linda, ain't nobody more faithful, is they? Huh? You and Kim been through the fire. Ain't nobody more faithful. Ain't nobody more powerful than Daryl. Ain't nobody more powerful than what he is. Huh? Huh? John Johnson is anybody than any greater to save you to save an old drunk, huh? Are they? Do you know that you know that you know that you know?
know him? Do you know him? Amen. You need to say, I mean, do you know him? Ain't it wonderful? Amen. You ain't to be in the church out there working on the car. He'll save me out in the yard, won't he, buddy? Uh, ain't no better life, are they? Ain't nothing sweeter, are they? Are you hearing me? That's the testimony of others. Ain't never no sweeter. Can I tell you this morning? I have found a friend that's faithful in every way. There ain't nobody any better than my friend Jesus. Yep. Right. Been there through the darkness. Been there through the light. Been there through the mountain and through the valley. Been there when times have been rough. But I never knew what the next moment would hold. Oh, thank God. He holds on to me. Don't you want him this morning? Don't you want him today? Would you let him save you today? Let him save you today. Thank you, brother. Bow your heads. Father, it's great. And I've tried for these 13 or 14 weeks or whatever. I've tried to tell them how great you are. I've tried to encourage you. <laughs> and if this morning, if you would do something, if you would speak in the hearts never like you've done before, if you will show yourself great inside them this morning, Speak to us, I pray. And I'll thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. And amen. Let's